left at 4.15ish, 7.33 now. We've just entered the hunting area here in the Kifui Flats. We haven't got to the flat part yet, but as soon as we do, we'll, we'll be looking for some lechway. Well, we made it to the flat, and um, there's plenty of lechway, that's for sure. Take your pick, I guess, and we'll see what we can find. There's literally lechway as far as the eye can see. I haven't seen another one of that unique shape. I know. So, you're called cool, Buena now. I kind of like the wider one. You, you, you do? The, 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 that, the, the, that shape. Yeah, the, okay. the, the unique The unique one. Yeah. I haven't seen any of that here. Yeah, me neither. So, this will get him. You think he's got good enough mass? Yeah, he's got enough mass. Um, his tips are inwards. Yeah. They're not outwards like this. Right, right, like, right. Like a normal lechery. But he still looks... He's, he's, very, he's, he's very wide. wide about yeah. It, yeah. Well, I like that one. That was the one that... He, yeah. Ray got most excited yeah. about, yeah. and, and yeah. I think all of us. Okay, so I think if that's if the one. If you have the wrong one, the white one, he's there. I think that's the one. Okay, you've 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 seen all these others. Yeah, n none of those were had. Uh, did I have that one? <laughs> that, that, mm, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's got that. Yeah, let's go get that one. Okay, let's, let's go get it. All right, I think we found one. All right. He just said the same thing. We're gonna okay. go. We're gonna go take another look. We seem to be all on the unique shape now, yeah. a, a shape that's uh, different from the others. And uh, let's let's get our wow there. I like it. Let's do it. We'll get our wow. Yeah, <laughs> good way to put it. We'll find him. <laughs> He's in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it exciting. Yep, it looks like him. He's standing. He's looking, looking at, at us now. Oh yeah, that's him. You see him? Is that what you want? You think that's 30? Yeah. yeah. If you think that's 30, then yeah. I'm happy with it. Yeah. He looks big. Yeah. Is he looking at us? No. no. Yeah, he's in the very back. He's walking towards the front. One more again. 235. Yeah. yeah, he's looking the other way now. Yeah, 235. Yeah. One more. He's walking away now. This is super one. I'm gonna just keep what little bit of hearing I have left on something like this where it's kind of
on the far right. Far right, no. 378, that's a bit far for this guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a good one. It's a far right, no man. Scope, scope, scope. Well, I've lost it now. And that group just wait. He's walking to the left. The other walking to the right. He's behind the one. Yeah. Oh, so it's after us? Yeah, he's left. Let him just stop. We see we're in his broadside now. There's a one young one in front of him. Almost done. It's really Good. close. Good with literally. Thank you, brother. Appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes, yeah. you <laughs> New species added to the list here in the Kafui Flats. It's a good way to start the safari. Look at the neck. With that white there, with the black there, all the way up, down to the legs. So unique. Very pretty. And their hair is kind of coarse yes. too. Look, yes. it's not. Awesome. That's such a cool animal. Yeah. yeah. Old boy. Old boy. Mm -hmm. Old boy. Yeah, so we had a, an early morning up at up at three out of the hotel by four. We had a three-hour drive through the dark that took us through downtown Lusaka, which was kind of a fun, interesting, different way to start the morning. And we got to the gate of of uh, the Kafui Flats here, checked in, did all the government paperwork, and it wasn't too long before we saw our first few lechwe, and not too long after that we saw a whole bunch more. And uh, Sarge and I saw this old boy and kind of put a mark on him and then we we decided we wanted to just go check all of our options so we made a pass and looked at some of the other bulls and decided to come back to this one so we uh we made maybe like a 10 minute stalk um we just kind of paralleled them for a while um you know downwind of them and finally we got within 250 yards and this one um this one separated from the herd and we were able to to get them on the ground with one shot so it was a, a fun and Unique experience out here on the flats. A beautiful place and a beautiful animal. Yeah, we braved the, the, the morning <laughs> yeah. cold and parked, and parked <laughs> tractors and all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah, no, it's always a challenge to get a shot on the ledge because uh, they're always mixing with other exactly. the other animals and uh, just for it to get a, to get a clear shot and uh, the distance as well is a big factor here. So coming up here near the ground, a nice flat shooting. Exactly. That reaches out there. Exactly. But it executed an excellent shot. Uh, we we did look at other lechwe as well. We had other options, and uh, we both came back to this one because it was nice and old and had a bell shape, which was unique, uh, not unlike the other traditional lechwe shapes. And uh, we opted to come back and look. Wow! Look at him. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> it, Sarge. Thank you very much. Awesome animal. You can see his ridges at the back here, how worn they are. Yeah, well, and you can see he's you know, yeah, old, yeah, his yeah. body's just... No, he's, it's a good old bull. Yeah. Good old bull for sure. No, he did pass some good genes there. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. And we got lucky too, the wind. Yeah, you know, the wind is just starting died, to, yeah. to come, yeah, so... It's a wonderful day. The sun's coming in and out. It's a good way to start the trip for sure. Yeah, yeah day one, Kafiu Lechwi, Kafiu Flats. On to Mufunta tomorrow. Okay.
around the, this Google thing will tell you the, the le where there's less traffic. <laughs> fitting a square peg into a round hole. That would be this plane. Shoes, I see. Eh? <laughs> hasn't learned what shoes are. You can't beat Zimbabweans, eh? <laughs> oh. We made it, obviously, and uh, now we're just unloading the plane. So, it's, weather's a bit um, unusual, I suppose, but I nothing we can't handle. So, yeah, here we are, finally.
we're just gonna go and first afternoon drive and see if we can one of the easier animals to find here with some luck is hartebeest normally so we'll um, see if we can pick up maybe a hartebeest that can help us to get some baits out early tomorrow morning and then in the afternoon or through the morning while we hunt look for something else and I want to concentrate on getting about eight baits out to start with and um, then just hunt as we go along with that so first afternoon here in Mofunta nice and cool winds and we see if we get lucky <laughs> It's nice sable here. It's a bit better than the first bull that we saw a few minutes ago. Nice thick horns, but probably not long enough to shoot, especially on the first day. You can see him now. The guy, when he walks high, flares. Look at the tips going down. Yeah. That's when you start getting length on them, when they get those tips. When he walks, you'll see, you'll see he's is what we call that arc. There we go. Yeah, got a leopard track here from probably last night. It looks like it's got some very nice pads. It's very hard ground and it's also, even though it's hard ground, it's got a nice print on it. Oh, it is hard, wow. It's very it hard. It looks soft from, no. from back, but... It's printing quite big for hard ground like that, eh? Hmm. It's not like, you know, when you've got soft sand, and that it just always bulges yeah. out, yeah. But I always look at the prominence of the pads on the back. So, uh, we're going to see if we can get around these harder beasts here and maybe go take a look at the winds going right at them from where we're, we're at right now, so drive down the road and see if we can get around them, get the wind right, have a look, see what we got. Get a first bait out. We just saw a leopard track five minutes ago, so it's starting to all take shape. Look at these bases. Oh. Very, very unique. Just nothing else on planet Earth is like that. Beautiful, eh? It's very cool. It's not going to get old, this trip.
cow and the bull, but the bull is on the far left and he's eating away from us the whole time. She must have been in this clump of grass. When we got here, that's why we didn't see her. Because I was here and I didn't see anything and all of a sudden she was there. Mm -hmm. Straight to the trees, bastards. I never saw that cow. She must have been in that clump of grass. Mm. Perfect. But there was too much brush as well here to try and take a shot at me. Oh yeah, no. That wasn't gonna happen. Struggle to find baits, but once we do, then it's on. This is how it's always been for me, so nothing unusual. Oops. Just reload that magazine for the next one. On we go. Round number three with the heart of beasts. even stable on its legs yet.
<laughs> so we're gonna leave this guy, even though we need bait because it's proper management. On to the next Hunter Zero Hard Beast 6. into the gap when I see it. He's feeding towards that gap where you saw him the last time. <laughs> I just have not had a positive... I think we're looking at about 140, 150. He's gonna come into that gap now. There he's coming, coming. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Come to see. There he's in the gap. That's a hit. There he's going to the left. I've lost which one it is. No, no, he's behind on the left. Far left, he's gone behind the turn. It's gone down. Dead. A nice old bull, eh? Look at his base, it's cool. And he's got long tips going back, eh? Yeah. Oh wow, I can't even get half a hand around that. That's yeah, they're much heavier than your red art to be stuck. For those western, the, but yeah. they're shorter here. Yes. That western one didn't have this yeah. big hook and then the tips were like mm -hmm. back here. Nice old guy, look how he's rubbed off here already. Look how they got black on their feet like so many of the other animals do. Yeah. Well Good done. job, Chana. Well <laughs> Finally, eh? First one. Oh, hey, thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, we, we do this. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. This is always my favorite part of hunting is walking up to an animal I haven't shot before and just getting to see how unique they are compared to the other animals. Um, the second morning of the hunt with this lovely, lovely weather we've got. Um, just totally insane weather, something that is totally unusual for this time of the year. Uh, second day of the hunt, 2nd of July, yesterday we saw lots of game but just never got onto anything to get a shot. I mean even this hard to be this morning Colton had to shoot at 240 yards 
we just don't seem to get closer to these animals. I don't know what is going on, but it's been interesting. A day and a bit of a morning. At least we got lucky and got this very nice bull all buggered down. Um, he's going to give us four leopard baits and maybe some tenderloins and stuff for the kitchen. And we want to try and put out at least eight, eight baits or more. The area is quite vast and there's a lot of water points and stuff. But it's a nice start. Um, great shot, Colt. Um, I actually misjudged or I misread the distance. <laughs> but luckily you've got a, a long distance shooting gun and you did a perfect, perfect shot. I mean, this bull didn't even go 30, 40 yards and he went down. Um, yeah, well done on a great bull, Bonner. Thanks, bud. Yeah, it certainly helps that the hearts are lower in the chest. So you have some room for bullet drop there. But yeah, we got some meat for the tree and a nice trophy bull at that. So two birds with one stone or whatever the saying goes. Yeah, so yeah. no, for sure. Finally connected and a new species for my personal list. So yeah, good no, day. Well done. And, good, and our first animal together. Yeah, so. well thanks, Werner. Appreciate well done. it. On to the next one. One, two, three. Cool. Every animal fits differently in the cruiser. It's like Tetris. other side of the car while we were watching Heart of Beast on this side of the car. So we'll take a look. Look at the difference it's already made. That's crazy. I mean, it's not crazy, but it's cool to see the transformation. I guess what I'm trying to say. They're not like the the normal leopards because they don't have the they don't have the um, competition competition yeah they don't have those bunches of lions and hyenas and stuff that bother them. Not enough hyena that you got to be careful of your bait yeah. This is one of the cameras that we bought, Vern. Yeah. <clears throat> Just explain the camera and the purpose, please, bud. Um, we always put the cameras on to kind of help determine the age of the cats and to make sure before you go and sit, you know, what you have got. It's also part of a study 
because on our cat reports at the end of a cat hunt we always send the information and the pictures and stuff into national parks oh, wow, I didn't that. Um, part of the studies and stuff that we are forced to do these days with fish and wildlife and all these organizations wanting sustainable utilization and showing that we are what we are doing so this is all part of kind of studies and aging and so parks does it mainly because u.s fish and wildlife requests it so that we can import it it's it's become part of that yeah it's become part of the whole bureaucracy thing, yeah 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 okay I want to see the cat when it's under the skirt. I don't want to try and make out what is a cat. 226. Yeah, but he's still not anything special, right? Eh? Shame. number two. This one took some thinking on Werner's part, which was impressive to watch him um, develop the whole plan here. But I think it's going to work. We'll see. There you go, Christmas. Oh, oh <laughs> that wood spongy. There's nothing to it. It's like it's not a hardwood at all. And you could chew that, it wouldn't hurt your teeth. It's weird. I've never seen wood like that before. It's almost like paper. Kind of damp paper. No wonder we couldn't push it over. <laughs> oh yeah, that's gonna be, it's gonna be a nice shooting lane there. What you say, Werner, you like it? No, let's just cut those. I'm just going forward. Rinse and repeat, I guess, right? This is, I don't know what number of bait I've put in a tree. Maybe this will be the one that makes a difference. So, we got one more left this afternoon. An hour and a half to do it, so, we've got time. I don't know how far away Werner's planning on going for the next one, but we're about to find out. I normally like to bait above water or close to water, but yeah, you've got no option. You're going to have to drag this cat off the road either, or from the pan. Well. It's 
domestic insect. Nicely in the sun there. Number three, two is a nice bull. There's a big bull as well. Basically what Werner has said that you at home have missed. Um, we're thinking about putting a blind back there and using this actual archy tree here to hang the bait in so the cat stands perpendicular. That's a leopard tree if I've ever seen one. I've seen a few. <laughs> Three different countries. Uh, we've come here to northern, more northern part of the concession, but we're not even close to halfway up. There's an area here called Orobi Pan, or Plain, which is the pan here. The guys have been seeing a track on the park boundary. It's not too far from here. I, we just drove in. I wanted to see if the pan has still got water, which it's busy drying up. But there's a fresh female track here from last night. So we're putting this bait here and I hope it works normally where there's females, there must be males. And the guys are saying they see the track coming from the park boundary in here as well. So um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Looks about right, Brenner. Yeah. So that's bait number four of the four that we have so far. So time to go shoot something else. So we get the uh, other four baits that Werner wants. It is um, 10.34, so we have plenty of time to do that before lunch. No, 
weird comes to the top where it turns for the tip to go back. The horn is broken off. Okay. The right horn is normal. The left horn has got the whole tip missing. Now we can heave him if you want. Good morning everyone. Uh, today is morning number four of our 14 day leopard hunt and the weather's finally giving us a, a look at what it's supposed to be like. So we'll see if, if that lasts or even maybe gets better. But that's the first bit of 
clear sky and sunshine we've seen really since we uh, got here. So hopefully that's a good sign for things to come today. We've got four baits out now and we're gonna try to to try something this morning and turn that into eight. So we're gonna go to a, a different direction from camp, I believe is the plan, according to uh, Mr. Werner who's busy over there. Uh, but yeah, we'll see what today holds, but I think it's gonna be a good one. Not ever really coming to Africa if you don't see an elephant, is it? It's a neat sight. It never gets old. circle. Effort is gone with a reward. And we gotta get our hands on them first. That was a hit. I said it's a big Very, very big boy. You see, he has the blood you've got to. Oh good, okay, that's good. From the, from the first shot. Just look in front, okay? If you guys see him shooting, okay? You see he has blood here yeah, as well. I don't know Just like that, but now we've got two in him. Yeah, see, he's bleeding a lot now more than you can. Well done, but done. That's, we're going to call that one done. Right, right here. I've got to walk all the way back. It's the fourth morning of our hunt. Hasn't been easy, but the weather has also not been helping us at all. Um, I'm pretty sure we saw this bull about two days, three days ago in the same kind of area with some females. Didn't get a shot at him, he got chased by baboons and stuff and this morning driving out and not exactly the same place but close by we saw him and straight away you could see it was a unbelievable big nice hartebeest. We um, did a quick stalk on them and they disappeared and I just you know decided that I wanted to give it a go by tracking them and started following them and you know where it helps a lot sometimes to know the area as well. I knew that the thicket was not very was very wide and they might come out on the opposite side. So about three quarter way through the thicket, I said to you guys that um, let's just leave the tracks and walk out on the other side and see maybe they're in the open plain. And I spotted some of the females, wasn't sure that it was the same group and did a quick follow up towards the females to take the chance. And yeah, uh, our luck turned and 
this big guy was standing completely on the left, far away from the females. Um, you made a, you had to make a very, very quick shot. Um, it didn't kill him on the first shot called, but he would have definitely died from it. Uh, follow up on a few uh, shots while he was running away afterwards. Um, and yeah, in front of us here, the result of a very, very, very special. Nice big heart to beast. Well done. Thanks. We'll call this one a lesson in physics and biology. Yeah. At least we get four more baits, but he's he's very special. He's a he's a much overall bull, better bull than what we shot the first one, and that's actually what we were trying to accomplish. Sure. So yeah, it all worked out well in the end. So we'll go back and have him skinned, and then we'll spend the rest of the day putting up more baits. Mushy man, I like it. Well done. Thanks, bud. That he would have obviously died from that shot there but at that stage he was so full of adrenaline it's like you know you hear of these stories where people shoot buffalo 10 shots mm -hmm. it's just when they full of adrenaline they just go and go and go and go and go i think he was just when he was looking at us he was not flat mm. he was like and your angle if you look at where your bullet is on the other side is perfect if he was perfect broadside, he would have been dead yeah, in that yeah. shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. There, let's go. Uh -huh. And then you come on the hook. You're just going to do one of those, um, like a standing post here, keeping the bait low like we always bait these cats. Very nice. Down here you can see Kristen is cutting our shooting lane so that there's no obstructions between where we're going to build the blind and where the leopard is uh, going to be here at the bait if this ends up being the, the place we decide to sit so it's very much a copy and paste sort of activity just same situation just different places around the concession here so this is number five for this trip we've got three more to put out today and See if we can't shoot something else along the way, maybe a warthog or a roan or whatever we find. But the heart of beast is finally done with. So, ah, there's that. And so along the same lines of preparing the area, so everything is just right. We're making a nice sandy area here at the bottom. Okay, slap, go down, jump on. Yeah, each are line. Oh, we should put it maybe there so we can see the nuts at the Would you wanna yeah, yeah. see the whole cat? Both of you die. We're busy preparing lunch for Colton and Grant here. The good old East Africa style, if you want to call it that way. I just don't have crystal glasses in the bottle of wine for you, that's all. But, um, yeah, we'll see what is for lunch. I think we've got something in a form of a stir fry with some uh, bread, some salads. And then also, I don't know what you guys call this back home. I call that a tortilla. Tortillas. A tortilla. Tortillas to make some, some wraps with for lunch and then we've got some bread and some salads and there we've got a like a yeah, stir fry stir fry mm -hmm. that we're just mm -hmm. gonna warm up some stir fry for what do you call it wraps freshly cooked and there's my lunch Hot to be hot and in Sima. Lunch in the bush. Highly recommend.
So this is number seven. Yeah, seven. And um, this one's took a bit more clearing than some of the others, but I figure we've got enough of, of that film. Chopping trees down and what have you. So they're just about to hoist the quarter up in the tree now. We way down towards the south of the area in the place where I saw it. The last time I hunted leopard, I never baited here, but I said I would like to bait here. Um, so yeah, we've come down here to try and find a place and see what happens. It's a quiet area. There's a lot of thicket around. There's lots and lots of game tracks around here. Hey, hopefully will be a cat. It's normally areas where it can be quiet like this and far away where you can pick up those big old cats that nobody find, nobody really look for. You got no fun. Finish this bait here. Now I think it's the seventh bait. Eh? There's a new road that cuts through the area that it's far. I don't want to take the chance. It's too late in the day. Just now we get caught up in the dark here, and then we don't know where we are. So we'll come back and cut through here tomorrow morning and go and put the last bait up. But yeah, we want to try and get at least another two extra baits up in the days ahead. But I think we. We have pretty good setup for now, but we'll keep on working and we'll keep on putting baits as long as there's meat. Off here to the right somewhere. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of animals out here in front of us. 
a very saved cow, so the horns are going straight up like an oryx. Yeah. So our little bait checking detour has come to a dead end. Back to the cruiser to carry on with the cat business. But it was worth taking a look. You never know what's going to be in a herd like that. Could have been a big one. It just didn't work out that way. That's hunting. We just pulled up to the number seven bait. And we can see from across the little pan here that the grass curtain had been pulled back. So Burger's going to go by himself and see what the situation is. That way, if there's been something eating, we're not disturbing it too much. I want to just show the runner. See what I like, Colton. He looks like he's got quite a good dew lap. That head, there's a picture here where you can see his nose. See, he's got that. Look at this bell here. And he lies, when he lies with his head there, and his, his head is here, his foot is there, he lies that whole stick foot. It looks like a very nice cat, eh? I don't think we must be too picky. He ate for the first time today, so there's no way he should not come back to them. But this picture here, I mean, look at that Roman nose. This has got a bow. Look at his tulip. Yeah, eh? And when he lies, it's a big piece of stump, that. His front foot is here, his head is there, then his tail is here. Mm -hmm. So he lies that whole thing for him. Okay, let's sit for him. I'm gonna sit. I'm gonna sit. I'm gonna sit. I'm gonna sit. Let's go. Come, let's go. Come. <laughs> um, we actually put this bait up yesterday afternoon. It's one of those places I told Colton that I would like to put a bait. I saw this place the last time I hunted here, but we never baited here. And I told Colton that an area like this sometimes can produce something special. So when we drove in this morning, I could straight away see the bait was tampered with. And um, changed the card and we looked at the pictures looked like a decent cat but I went back to look at the size of the cat when he lies on the tree to try and combine and determine. He's got a very long body um, and looking at one or two of the pictures we were standing sniffing the bait you can see he's got a very nice dewlap and looks like he's got that roaming nose with that saggy mouth which is always a sign of a good old cat. So we're going to rush back to camp to get the leopard blind and stuff. I don't think in this area we must be too picky to be honest with you because we don't have the volumes of leopards here but there's nothing wrong with this cat as you've seen yourself. Sure. I mean he looks like a very very nice leopard. He ate the first time. He was there till 6.15 this morning. So I think we've got a very good chance that he'll come back. It's quiet here, it's far away from everything. So we'll go and get the blind quickly and come and set up and then we'll sit this afternoon. Bushy. Yeah. 
finish that and I guess have some lunch and then sit. just that small little thicket. So if he ran backwards, he would have run into open terrain, okay? So you wouldn't have heard him run. But if he ran towards where his tracks went this morning, you probably would have heard him running in the grass. Yusuf, hello, listen to me please. Turn the round so bad. Huh? Let's go around the left side where we shot here to the left. 
put the car in full load please. Here is on the left, white, 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 white. Relax. White, don't shoot. Don't shoot if you're on the left, left, right. That's a proper cat, right? Eh? That's awesome. I told you they get bigger than the lion. No kidding. Now we don't have to stay up all night for the rest of the week. Well done again. Oh, man. Stay in the hunt. Content? Your luck has changed on this safari. Yeah, there we go. There we go. That's too cool. Too cool. Wait, wait, wait. Ah, what is your life, you ask? Yeah. But last time, I was like, I'm going to talk about you now. Yeah, yeah. Nobody, but you know, that's something else. It was five years in the making right there. Three different countries. Very, very awesome. <laughs> I might have to do that again. So how big a cat is that since I've never seen one before? <laughs> That's a, that's a proper cat. 70 pounder? That's a proper cat. Ha. That is a proper cat. That didn't have as much ground shrinkage as a bear does. You going to jack it? You want to move it? Ah, yeah. Yeah. It's going to go to my girl go to. Yeah. My girl go to. Good, good, good. Thank you. Mushe. Mushe, mushe. Mushe chewy. Yeah. Mm. If you've even got a mark here from fighting, huh? Now this is a beautiful cat called. It's our fifth day of the hunt. A hunt that started off to should happen in the Luangwa Valley, Colton. 
and um, we were supposed to hunt here in the Kafui next year um, due to some issues with the areas and stuff this year we had to make some plans and kind of swap the hunts around do the Luangwa next year I said to Colton when I phoned him about it I said listen we don't have the volumes of leopard here that we have in the Luangwa but if we shoot cats we shoot big cats in the Kafui um, we've got a magnificent leopard in front of us Colton you've had three safaris you've put in the time I'm so so happy for you that this played off uh, normally you asked me the other day how long before cats come on bait I said to you I work on six to ten days we've done it in five we put this bait up yesterday afternoon and lo and behold this morning the bait was eaten there was no even any doubt looking at the pictures that it was a young or a small cat we quickly rushed around today you said you didn't see too many smiles of, from me but that's how <laughs> I am when I had left it um, we put up the blind quickly and this guy jumped in the tree right at that last 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 light like they a lot mm. of times like to do um, there was no doubt when this cat was in the tree whether we were looking at a female or a young male it was mm. just excitement all throughout the blind you could not see the shoulder at the best because his head was turned towards us but you made a perfect shot just behind the shoulder through the lungs I kind of when we you know discussed it I said the reaction looked like behind the lungs he probably went about 40 yards and yeah the result in front of us here of a magnificent leopard well done Colton thanks Werner well done Bonner. I don't know what I would add to that this has been pretty perfect yeah it's a beautiful beautiful cat and a big cat yeah and awesome. that's what we wanted well done very cool two of the big five down so maybe some sable tomorrow yeah but first we're gonna go back and have a drink or two and celebrate it <laughs> we are not Zimbabweans we are Zambians done here with all the pictures and stuff now we've got about an hour's drive a little bit more than an hour to camp um, so we can go and celebrate the success <laughs> words I don't know what a video is worth but it was a good day it's a great day
It's a little cold this morning. It's not like a hard to be straight. You can just go and say, okay, let's shoot an arrow. No, no, sure. I don't know. It's one of those sables that you, for some other reason, doubt yourself. Sometimes you should just walk away from it. But he's got very, very thick horns. He's got long tips. That can be deceiving. And he's kind of standing in a bit of a shade, so I can't see the horns nicely in the sun. To look at the bases and stuff. Hopefully he'll step out and we can see something better. I'm not going to 
shoot it. Yeah, it's about 200. It's just, let me just have one. Now it's too far. Hmm. Not the one for us, or we would have killed it a hundred times over. I could have shot that thing in the fucking ear from where we were. It's gonna be like that the whole day. I can't make my mind up. It's one of those days. So uh, we stood here at this little mound, termite mound thing, covered in grass, watching this bull and cow for, I don't even know, it felt like 20 or 30 minutes. After maybe a 15 or 20 minute stalk and Werner just didn't like something. So eventually the bull got tired of playing the looking at each other game and ran off and the decision was made for us. But we still got a week left and I'd rather play it on the conservative side. This is the best sable area in the world, so if there's any kind of doubt, just keep going. Um, but that was our first sable stalk. Had him in the crosshairs and could have killed him. Just didn't do it. He's still looking at him. It's gonna not sleep well at night. I would say it's five for sure. Four bees. Oh, there's four of them. There's another. Yeah, oh, five the young of them. Man. There's five of them. Oh yeah. Way to the right. They're just appearing. Let's look around a bit more. Look around a bit more. Yeah. Man. Mr. Runner's being dicky. All right. He says, look around a bit more. We're gonna look around Brandon. a bit more. Wait, sorry. You see where this long grass is here? You don't, Colt, if you're not sure, we can take the car and go closer till we get a close shot of it. I'm just worried about the grass blowing him up. And you want to try and sneak in behind this bush and see if we can get about 50, 60 yards closer and maybe a bit higher up. Okay, let's come down. Come this side. Just walk slowly to that grey bush there. Now you see why I take my time, Colton? <laughs> so to anything you've Whoa. seen so far. Whoa. Jeez, bro. The others we were looking at were all like that. Gosh. A monster. That is a monster. <laughs> Can you come down, Colt? Sure, man. Sorry, I'm just in awe of this thing. Mm. The tiniest stuff sometimes can have the biggest oh, the wow ears, factor. The ears is four and a half. Because that's nine. No, I think you'll be close to six. six. Six or just over six. Well done. Thanks. 
Good job, Bernard. And a good shot, eh? Turn it, let's turn him over because he was facing. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that shot perfect. Was perfect. And it just because he was quartering on to us. Lecker. Say Mushi or a bee. That's a big, big, big one. Dude, that's awesome. So this is apparently a very, very strong trophy. Better than anything we've seen so far, and you don't really have to have ever shot one to tell that this is just, it's one of those animals that you can see and say, yep, that's what we want. So add this to the species list, an Oraby. 200 yards at least, maybe more. Yeah. And not an unkind wind, or in not a kind wind. 30 out six, does it again. So this is a trophy Orby here, by all standards. And Werner saw him running uh, through the plane with his plane eyes, and I think he felt like it was a candidate after putting the binoculars on him. He uh, confirmed that, that thought, and so we jumped off the car and made a little short stalk reset after he ran a little bit. And I think I probably hit him at like at least over 200. We didn't range him, but yeah, it's a good shot, and here he is. Yeah, it's a very, very special male. You don't shoot males of this size every day. Um, we've been looking at lots and lots of Oraby that I've been passing on. Um, said to Colton, we must try and get something close, at least to five inches or so. This exceeds that by far. It's really, really a very special trophy. Very nice animal and nice thick basis. You did a good shot. Well done, Colt. It's a, it's a very, very nice big order be this. Thanks, Sham. Well done. Appreciate it. Yes, I guess. Yeah. The way he's lying there, if you shoot him, you'll shoot him in the gut. Okay. And we don't want to do that. Let's try our luck. I mean, this is a good elevated position. We could just wait for a minute. We can try. So when they lie like that, they'll lie for all. Oh, well, okay. I'm just trying to think. The lower you get, the less of them you're going to see. Yeah. I'm sure you'll stand up just now. I mean, I could do that, but there's no reason to push it. Yeah. Probably get a broadside lying down shot on him if they don't find him. I'm glad we didn't shoot him. Yeah. Look, it, you get rewarded when you don't push things. Yeah. It's not as heavy as that one this morning. No, it's not as heavy. difficult to judge sometimes because of their horns. And the shape of their horns. Right. We're gonna go take a look at this 
road that we saw all by himself. It's freaking cold this morning. Um, yeah, we followed a roan that we saw in the distance and lost him for some time and then picked him up again and as we got close enough to maybe possibly get a shot at him we had the fortune of a honey guide bird that started making noise and alerted the roan and yeah, he just took off straight away. He didn't even look once or twice. Um, there's certain things in nature that alerts animals, and the honey guide is one of them. Um, actually, if you would follow the bird, you would end up finding honey wherever, somewhere. There's no telling how far it is, how close it is. And there's myths of when you find the honey that you would take some of the honey that you find and you take out and leave it for him to eat as well but unfortunately the bird cost, cost, cost us our roan this morning it was a very nice bull bull that you don't see every day in Mufunta maybe we'll see him in the days ahead in the same area it's a possibility so we'll just carry on and see if we can find some sable or reed buck or something and if you don't leave the honey guide some honey, what does he do next time around? Mm. Well, there's stories, I don't know how true they are, but there's stories that if you don't leave him honey, the next time you follow him, he might take you to a snake or to something that's dangerous or to, to danger. But yeah, that's all a myth. It's, it's, there's no proof of it. But if well, the true part is he will take you to hunt. Yeah, no, the true part is he'll take, and he's still following us. There he's sitting there. I 
Mercedes. And I've got to tell them the difference between a 47 and a 45. But he's very close to 45. It's a big ball. If you can, shoot him right in that chest cavity. you to do, you see where that white stripe, that point comes here, take, it, take your time, where that white stripe starts, right in the center there, in the, all right, let's leave him, oh, I'm cool, eh? huh? I'm cool. that's a big sale, that's a big sale, that's that bull we saw, Colton. I think it is. That's a big sable. As soon as you gave me the binoculars, I was like, that's the one. That's that sable we saw. Look at the basis on him, Colton. Just by my cameraman's reaction, I think we've shot a pretty liquor sable. I mean, I know it's big, but I'm going to downplay it until we get a tape measure. That's really badass. I think that's the bull we saw the other day. It was right here in the same place. No, it was a little bit forward when we saw him the other day, probably about a kilometer further. I told you I wanted to shoot the saber with a 416. Yeah. You're making the tracker job too easy. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a beautiful bull no matter what, but he's amazing. No matter how you look at him, he's an amazing saber. Can you lift the head up? Just from where you are, just tilt it up. They don't, they don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a proper thing, my father. Ah, his ears all torn. See how high he comes up? Mm -hmm. That's a proper thing. You can, you can feel it when you pick a sable like this up the horns. You can feel it's a big sable. Well done. Thanks, bud. That was cool. That is a beautiful bull. Eh? <laughs> Thank, you. So Thank you. Thank you. What if it's like this? I said, look up. When Joseph. Cool. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Nice one. What is that one? I'm going to take that one in my living room and just let George have it to sell that. You mean Mike's? Yeah. Yeah. It's a tank. I thought it was a cool looking sable until you see something like that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, a cool looking sample when you see something like that. <laughs> 27. Oh, what's. Uh, I'm having a brain for it. 36. 45. That might be 47 easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's just a rough. <laughs> It might be 48. <laughs> that's gonna be a big bastard, that's for sure. Don't look. Oh, I'm looking. Close your eyes, you too. <laughs> that's not, not a chance, dude. Holy shit. <laughs> 50 <laughs> inches. Holy shit. Good lord. 
can't believe it. <laughs> Dude, how is that even physically possible? Take the take me from the message. I might be I might be wrong, I might be 49 and a half. That will be my second 49 and a half in Russia. Now we're gonna get That's 50. 50. <laughs> yes! I've broken 50! <laughs> the first time in my life! Yeah. 25 years of being a PH. Oh. You can drink a bottle of scotch today. <laughs> my God! Yeah. I cannot believe it. The closest I've ever been was 49 and 7 inch. That's 50. This will probably be the first one in, I don't know how really? in wild field, I mean, yeah. not pinned animals in Africa. <laughs> 11 inch basis. Oh. That's why this thing didn't look that like big. After 25 years, I've never shot a 15 inside. I've just... That's all I can say. I've, I've never... I don't think I'll ever break 50. It's, it's amazing. It's something very special. <laughs> My goodness. And that leopard that we got. The Lechway even, even though you weren't there for that, it started off on a yeah. high note. That's unbelievable. It doesn't matter what else we shoot the rest of the trip. Yeah. That's, that's, we did what we came here to do. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now are you glad you didn't shoot that one yesterday morning? Yeah. It's July 8th, our eighth day of this hunt. This hunt started off for Colton with a big bang, getting that uh, 32 inch Lechway. And, um, then not to mention and to forget about the fifth day leopard on the hunt, which normally doesn't happen. Um, after that, we, since the first day, we've been looking at lots and lots of sable. We've seen probably 300, oh. 400 more sable. Um, we've kept on passing, kept on passing. We said we wanted to look for, you know, a special sable. The second day of the hunt, we saw this bull, what we think, and we sure it's him on this tree line area here and we said we wanted to come back and look for him uh, he was very far he looked like a very big sable uh, yesterday we looked at a bunch of other bulls and um, passed on them one. as well almost shot one we came back to the same area this morning and um, <laughs> I what I actually saw is I just saw a sable feeding and we went in behind some bushes and we stopped and started walking until we could get to a spot where we could see him. Straight off the bat, I could see he had very, very thick horns, which is a lot of times deceiving on the, the actual length of the sable. Um, until we could see him properly lifting his head, and I said to Colton, listen, this is a big sable. I looked at him at 45 <laughs> when in the beginning. When we eventually decided to shoot him, I was very positive that he would make 47 which is for Western Zambia Sable or anywhere in Africa, it's a, a very, very, very unbelievable Sable to take. Very old bull. That's all you look for always, is the age more than anything else. But something happened today that's never happened in my life with me. Um, I've been guiding close to 25 years, and we all have this dream of shooting a 60-inch kudu with a client or a 100-pound elephant. This Sable turned out to measure exactly 50 inches. For a wild free roaming sable, you don't find much better than this Colton. It's um it's I think more a special day for me of my mm. hunting career than what it is for anybody else in this group today. All I can say to you is well done and it's something that you'll probably never in your life see or hunt again. It's a 
it's an unbelievable sable um, a dream come true and I'm so happy and glad that we got him and happy for you and I'm sure every time you look at him on the wall in years to come you will remember this day yeah, well done to you bud congratulations yeah, I'm, I'm more happy for you than I am myself obviously I'm chuffed but obviously this being the first sable that I've ever shot there's a little bit of um, spoiledness going on exactly. there yeah it's like you know you come the first time to Africa in a safari and you shoot a 60 inch kudu you don't really it doesn't register mm -hmm. but in time I'm sure it will register for with sure you. but it's it's phenomenal it's it's unbelievable he had nearly 11 inch bases so all in all um, just something out of this world so so happy It's um, you know, it's amazing how hunts happen sometimes. Once there's pressure off and there's no pressure, no pressure or anything. We just came out this afternoon after shooting that magnificent sable this morning on an easy drive. We said let's go and look for Reedbuck or something, and out of nowhere, yeah, this grown bull is. He's a He's an old bull, he's very, very thick, his bases uh, for Mofunta, amazing run. And yeah, we jumped off, made a stalk back to where we saw him. And I saw him starting walking away. First he was looking at us, and I just waited and waited for him to start walking away. And when Colton was ready, I whistled quite hard and he stopped and gave us a quarter away shot. Colton made a quick shot on him. I saw you pulling the trigger there with a safety on no. <laughs> And then after I saw that I was like Colton take your time, don't be anxious, he made a great shot. Well, you know when the trigger won't go and you're like what the Yes. And that's normally when you make a mistake. That's why I said to you, take your time, relax. And yeah, he went probably 60 or 80 yards and we're walking there to go and see what we've got. My God, Colton, this is an unbelievable run, eh? This is an unbelievable old run. Look how, look how he's even worn down more than your saber. Look at this. Yeah, that bullet messed him. That's all. That is an unbelievable nice run for you, eh? Shot went out. Straight through. That's an amazing run, man. Eh? Well done. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening here? Man, oh, man. Thank you, Christmas. Uh, thank you. So come on. Go. Come on, go. <laughs> That's nine. That's 18. He might be 25 on this side. Yeah. 25, 26. How many rolling carbines do you have? We 26 get, on that side, maybe? Something get, like that? Um, I think it's... Rowan and Sable, they're yeah. obviously related, but they're, they're so different. Like, we don't know what's going on there. Um, 
very interesting where at some point in time they just kind of did this. But the face is similar, obviously the horns are similar. Similar shape body-wise, yet so different. There's nothing much more you can say. I mean, just a phenomenal lucky day. Exceptional, exceptional trophies. As old as they can get, you can't wish for something better. Very, very nice round. Um, yeah, Colton, I think we're pretty much done hunting for today. Yeah, it's time for a beer. Yeah, no, it's an unbelievable round. You made a good shot. Congratulations. Thanks, bud. Well done. Awesome day. find us a big eland. So we've come down towards the south of the concession where we know the eland and stuff normally hang around. We've picked up two bull tracks, looks like nice bulls. They've crossed the road fresh tracks. We haven't reached the point of water yet but we've decided to just follow the tracks and see what happens where we go. I haven't been in this part of the concession much. It's a new area we're exploring. So can't really make a plan to say let's drive and we'll probably bump them in front or something. We need to just follow them and see where it takes us. See what happens. So you know we've come this way mm -hmm. from where we left the car. So yeah, oops. If we just go Straight that way. I want you to drive back for me, drive back for me to that pan where we stopped, where we were checking for the tracks on the right hand side of the road when we were coming this morning. Just drive back to that pan and then you can wait there for us and maybe you can start cooking food and stuff like that. Day, but to walk Mahala is not for what? <laughs> yeah, you gotta work smarter, not Because harder. we're not gonna catch these things. Unless if he's run through into those trees. Looking for a reed buck right now. It's a big man.
Это девчонки. It seems like our luck has not run out yet. Um, it's just been one of those hunts where everything, you know, goes like a clock. Uh, we drove out this morning on our way to an area where we were yesterday, but we want to do some bundle bashing in the big plains and stuff where there's no roads trying to find some reed buck and um, uh, eland probably if we get lucky and a grace buck. Um, not too far from camp, uh, we I spotted a female on the opposite side of one of these dumbos as we call them, the grass flay areas. And um, this guy jumped up and ran and we, it was quite a quick chase um, in the long grass uh, trying to spot them and they disappeared and then we looked for them again and spotted them. We jumped off and probably did a quick, I would say 200 yard, 300 yard stalk. Uh, luckily we had a termite mount with some long grass between us and where they went in behind. Um, as we came out on the side of it, Colton actually spotted this guy, you know, following the female. And um, as I got caught on the sticks, I whistled and he stopped a bit of a quarter, quarter away, but more broadside, yeah. looked back at us and um, yeah, you managed to get a shot in. Uh, one of the biggest males we've seen so far on the hunt mm -hmm. made a good shot, I would say. He went probably about 80 yards yeah. and this is exactly how he died, how he fell over. So that's why we've left him just like that to take pictures and uh, another lucky start to another day and very nice reed buck in the salt. Well done. Yeah, we still got a whole, a whole day ahead of us and today's the 10th day, so the rest of the day and then four more hunting days. So yeah, plenty of time to find an eland and a Christbuck and then our, our bag will pretty much be complete if we can pull that off. So yeah, it's a good start to the day with this guy for sure. Yeah, I know. Very nice, man. One thing to notice before they take this back to camp and skin it out is how woolly the bottom of the, the cape is. Now that we've got them turned over, you can see it's just like, it's like wool. It's pretty cool and unique. Every animal here has something unique about it and that's, that's one of the unique things about the reed bug. Very soft. We just found a nice spot here close, not far from where we shot the leopard and we're just um, making a bit of barbecue and some salad and stuff for lunch and then we're going to carry on. We've Bundu bashed this morning and made a new road and this afternoon we're going to drive on a road that we haven't been on yet and see if we can find something. This is a very cool spot. It is nice, nice and shady. And out of the wind too. Yeah.
here. Not many days you get to eat a 50 inch sable. But, uh, The old tree that's fallen over here in the main road so we're just making fire to burn it it will burn all the way ashes will stay so we can pass on the main road again we're just uh, enjoying some elephants here at the end of our 10th day on safari we've seen douglas before but the chamois are making their first appearance So close. <laughs> All of that driving to find one. What do these people normally do is that they uh, collect branches to make a line starting from that far end, go stretching to that two way end. That's uh, by doing that, they are trying to block the animals sure. so that they don't jump these areas. Okay. They leave one spot where animals go always close, and that's where they are going to set the wire snares. Okay. So the animal cannot jump. Here. Sure. Yeah. It will find one spot where it will close. Okay. And by so doing, it will somehow. Uh, sure. So uh, this is the, the pole where a wire snare will be touched, will be tied. Sure. Yes. Then he's going to bend it this way. This is the opening that I was talking about, which the animal will always pass through. Okay. Because the animal fears to pass through that tree line. And then he will leave this opening. Okay. And the animal will pass through this one. Then he will bend this, this pole to this. Here there is a hole. Sure. 
you will dig a hole. Oh wow. Yeah, there is a hole. Then he will put this thing here. Oh, okay. This thing is a bit light. Sure. Then once was near, we will go around it, this hole. So if the animal passes through this opening, it will there will be a, a certain oh, wow, thing here. Big. Like, yes. Yeah? You will do like this. So if the animal steps here, ah. this thing will be placed the hat down. Oh, okay. <laughs> then as a result, that is that the pole now. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, oh, and then the animal will be caught. All right. Yes. It will be caught by the lake. So this, this one's all very old, but... Yeah, these ones are very old. But you can see that... But if these things were new... Sure. Very deadly. Sure. Very deadly. Yeah. That's why it's so and important it, for our dollars to go towards stopping stuff like yes, this. Yes, and this is what the poachers do. Yeah, this is because, indiscriminate. Because if they use a firearm, they, they in fear that they will be heady from afar. Sure. But this is a silence killer. Exactly, and they don't, kill they, animals don't, in silence. they don't pick an old animal or anything like that. They just catch what they catch. And they are not selective. Yeah, yeah. exactly. They are not selective. They can catch a female animal. Sure. A young animal, a big animal, sure. just like that. Yeah. It's a shame, but mm. that's what people back home don't understand. It's not <laughs> yeah. hunting that's a threat to wildlife, it's poaching. Mm. Hunting actually helps wildlife by stopping poaching. Yeah, honestly. So, yeah. It's a shame though, you don't like to see stuff like that. At least this one's not, you know, like in use. Hmm. Very interesting. <laughs> very interesting. Yes. Thank you for the explanation. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Bush pigs! Oh, Texas style bush Thank pigs. Thanks, Gustav. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Me, I'm taking the Java. You're not getting it. <laughs> well, we stuck it out. This is one of the things that we were waiting for after we kind of killed the main species that we wanted. And I guess our luck continues. I'm not giving you. <laughs> <laughs> the second last morning of our hunt um, we've had a bit of weather change the last two days all due to the moon change as well um, went out this morning drove along one of the little creeks there where there's a lot of water that we that I thought we might have a chance and Colton actually asked me he said if the two main animals left Bushpig and Gracebuck which one do you think we're more likely to get? And I said, well, definitely a gracebuck because we've been seeing a lot more of them. Um, we found where something had killed a kudu cow last night. It was very interesting to see. Definitely wild dogs or hyena. Um, I don't think that leopard can eat that much in one night, especially on a kudu cow. And um, just tagging along, driving along, talking and looking around. Uh, looking in the termite mounts for the grace buck, paying attention to that. Our cameraman started having kind of like the fits next to us. Um, sounded like he's having a heart attack or a panic attack or something. And I just heard bush pig, bush pig and looked in the far distance to the right where they were talking and saw this group of bush pig running. 
Um, I kind of thought that the male would be in the back. That's normally the, the, the situation. And yeah, in the, in the open plains here in Mufunta, they can sometimes take off. So we made some, some quick movements. Um, I did eventually see the, the big ball was falling behind. Um, it was some quick shooting, Colton. Your, your first shot actually hit him. I thought that you had shot over him or behind him because he was kind of moving when you shot. Mm -hmm. Um, but to my surprise, I mean, the bullet went just straight through um, on where you had shot. I thought it would have stayed in on inside. Sure. So I saw the dust bounce in the back, um, but you actually did hit him. He ran about another 15, 20 yards and stopped again. And But that was actually not stopping you. You shot him while he was running as well. Second shot freehand. Made a good shot right in the top lungs there and put him down. And yeah, in front of us, the result of a very 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 nice uh, bush pig um, congratulations on a very nice trophy thanks Werner yeah this one was eight years in the making this has been on the list since the very first time I made it to Africa so that was that was worth the wait for sure and I'm excited to see how they taste too yeah I've heard they're pretty good to eat so yeah no, for sure now we just got to go find one more animal and we'll have like the most perfect safari in the history of safaris <laughs> All right. Okay. We'll see you later. See you, bueno. Thanks, Watson. Thank you. See ya. See you. Good one. Thanks. They're going to take our pig back to camp and clean it and process it. And we're going to carry on. And we got one more animal on the hit list. So we'll see if we can make this a 10 out of 10. Actually, was that number eight or nine? We're making a nine out of nine, whatever it is. But <laughs> we're, I, I like our chances. So we're going we're gonna to keep going. Watson. Yes, sir. Go a little bit to the right for me. It's a bloody warthog. No. Is it? the nose. Warthog. It was just sticking its head out. Can you see its nose? I did just now. It's a bloody warthog.
Hello, Fenwell. Hello. How are you? Fine, how are you? Very well. Let me get one in a minute. I got my hands full. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Fenwell. Oh, I'm caught. That's the first time that's happened this week. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. That's the end of our 14-day safari at Mafunta. So I think maybe it's time for a little tour of the camp now that we're all wrapped up with the important stuff. Um, right now we're in the entry area. The whole camp is fenced with this thatching and this orange building you see in front of us is kind of the family living dining room. Of course, the campfire area is just off here to the left. And you've already seen our tents, which are located here behind the the dining room. You see the inside of them. These are what the outsides look like. So Werner's tent's on the left. My dad's in the back. Mine here on the right. Um, I like the layout. So it works. It's very functional. So. so this is the living area and bar. And to the right, the dining room. This is the Mafunta water heating system for each of the tents. This one is for my tent, and it works exactly how it looks. Fire at the bottom, water in the container up above. The water goes underground and into the uh, ensuite bathroom area where of course we've got a shower and uh, a sink. So very basic but efficient system. We're in the transition area between like our living area and kind of the behind the scenes area. So this is a dead space, kind of basically, except for our beloved cameraman's cabin back there. But just on the other side of the fence is, is the kitchen and where all the food is prepared. So this is like I would, what I would call the pantry. And uh, of course over here is the chefs are busy preparing our lunch it looks like. Hello. Hello. Pizza for lunch? Yes. Pizza. Yeah. We're having pizza for lunch. Pizza for lunch. So all of the cooking is done with, with fire, wood fire, no electricity. Well, no, I haven't even seen this myself. That's very, very awesome. So yeah, that's that's our oven, stove, all of the above. <laughs> Dishwashing station next to the kitchen. Drying racks for all of the used stuff. That's the chili bag. This is the tom here. This is near the Mmm. This is needs a little bit more, but this is all dry now. This is really good. But that's the chili sticks. Mm. That's the bolton here. That's really good. This is a worthwhile pit stop on the way to Skinny Chat. It's a combination of, what was it, sable and reed bag. Oh, it's our meat. Mm -hmm. No, it's not what you brought with you from the other. No, oh, that got finished already. This is really good. Well, you only waited until the 14th day to have your stuff ready for us. Yeah. <laughs> this is the skinning shed. the most important room in the entire camp. Ray, where do you want to take pictures of the stuff on the outside of the fence? <laughs> that would mess you up.
I don't think he's much more than five, eh? See, when they get very much older, this is gets a lot more wear on the back here. Mm. I think he's probably about five. Last night here in Mufunta, and uh, we're just trying to make the most of it. Enjoy the fire and wait on dinner, have a drink. Just think about what a two weeks it's been before we catch our flight out of here tomorrow. So it's definitely a lecker place. Oh, well, we have a special treat tonight. Uh, the last night. You. <laughs> you. <laughs> Alex can be glad there's clients sitting here. Because <laughs> I would have told you something now. I don't think I'm excited. I'm not for it. I'm not having wine, but I've got a whiskey. Cheers on a great safari. Thanks, Bona. Mm. This cook's definitely got it figured out. I would like to see this guy and Ledmore have a competition. <laughs> now, each of them on their best day. Head to head, like Iron Chef Africa camp chef thing. Mm. That'd be fun. Iron Chef Africa. <laughs> mm. No, for real. It's um, our last morning here in Mafunta, and this trip started over two weeks ago in the Kafui Flats, just west of Lusaka with a nice Kafui Lechwe. And then we, we traveled here um, and started our leopard hunt after obviously some political circumstances rearranged our itinerary. But um, like you told me, if we did shoot a cat here, you thought it'd be a much bigger cat. And so we, we started out by trying to find a harder beast for bait, which we did, uh, I think, on the first hunting day. Um, all of the weather had the game sort of skittish. We, we still got one down, got some baits up. And then, if I remember correctly, the second day we kind of struggled, connected with another nice harder beast on the third day, put some baits up. Um, the last bait we put up that 
evening uh, when we checked it the next day, that's where we saw our cat. And we were fortunate enough to sit once and shoot a nice leopard, which for me was over 30 days of leopard hunting in the making in three different countries. And I don't even know how many years. I think we're going on, <coughs> on five years now. Um, so that was obviously a, a highlight of the trip. And if, if anything was going to, um, to underscore that, I think the very next animal we shot was a top 10 Orby. Yes, for sure. <laughs> and uh, after that, as if it couldn't get any better, we, uh, we found that big sable bull that we saw early in the trip and shot him. And <laughs> to think to everyone's surprise when we put the tape on it, of course it was a, it was a green score, but a true 50 inch sable, which is obviously, you know, that's what this area is, is specializes in is, is sable. So we, we've already halfway through the trip had two top 10 animals and one of the big five. Um, that evening we followed up with a roan. So the skinning shed was already getting quite full. And after the roan, um, our list kind of started to dwindle down we ended up finding a very nice mature reed buck, added that to our our trophies, and of course um, there towards the end we got lucky and, and found those bush pigs. Yes. So, yeah. Now all in all, Colt, I think it was a a hunt that obviously and honestly don't happen every day. Um, I think it was just the hunting gods were shining on you this time for all the bad luck that you've had in the previous trips and stuff you know at some stage it has to turn sure um yeah it was a very very good start i mean we were all thoroughly um blown out of the thing when you and sarge on that first day <laughs> shot that 32 inch um, lecture i mean that is not every day that that happens either sure and yeah the luck just carried on throughout the hunt i mean shooting a leopard on the fifth day of the hunt um, was something you asked me the one night and said how long and I said anything between six and ten days um, you know you get hunts like that that just work and I'm very happy and obviously we're very thankful for the hunt that we've had and for um, whoever looked down on us and blessed us with everything and one of my personal highlights of my life um, guiding um, a 15 sable I think that is in today's time and age in wild free roaming Africa it's like every you know professional hunter's dream to shoot a hundred pound elephant or a 45 inch buffalo or you know something like that um, it was a very humble moment it was a very special moment a day that you probably all will remember for me for a long long time but as you say the rest of the hunt it was like a clock mm. everything worked well we shot some great trophies um, we can just hope that the hunts to follow will keep on being good. Yeah, absolutely. We can't, we can't, ex we can't hope that they're all going to be top tens, but that the hunts go good, and I think yeah. we'll be hunting in good areas, and we'll have some, you know, some good trips together. I'm very much looking forward to doing that rhino with you next year. And absolutely. Then coming back to Zambia, we have still got a few hunts planned in Zambia, and mm -hmm. it seems like a few more in other places yep. like Tanzania and Botswana and which we'll start working on. Um, but all in all, a great hunt. Um, One of the best. I'm glad it worked out this way. I'm glad you guys are happy. It was great having you. And look forward to the future ones to come. Absolutely, yeah. If you're watching this, we hope that you've enjoyed watching it as much as we've enjoyed doing it. And we'll see you next year starting in South Africa. And Werner, I'll see you stateside in February. Exactly. Thanks, bud. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome. You're welcome. We are going home in style. They've upgraded us because we shot so many good trophies. No, I'm kidding. That uh, overbooking, but we still get to take the king air out of here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take it easy, man. Pleasure, bud. We'll see you again. Thank you, Crispin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, yeah. It was a lecker hat. Back to the States. Okay. Yeah. Oh, dude, this thing is dope. Yeah, it's a bit cha it's a bit different from the uh. from the Baron. 
you guys come in on the Baron? Yeah, they came in on the Baron. I was here already because I was in the It's a tight fit. Man. So I just so drove down careful not to uh, for the safari. Break anything. And now I'm going back to Nyambu. My guys Pilots are, are picky about the airport, so grabbing their Nyambu dashboards. Tonight, tomorrow I'm going to Chisomo to Thumbs start up. a leopard day. So we're going to go 19,000, we're all ready for takeoff. Let's roll. Okay, good.